Welcome back. It's the breakfast. Another time to look through the pages of our national dailies. We'll call it off the press. And Ezekiel Niaitok joins us via Zoom this morning. Ezekiel, it's good to have you join us. Thanks for having me. It was such a pleasure to be there. Thanks for having me. All right, then. Let's take a quick look at the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. How 23 remaining abducted Kanu, I beg your pardon, Kaduna train passengers were released. How 23 remaining abducted Kaduna train passengers were released. Families excited how negotiators sealed the deal. NRC to unveil plan to train service resumption. That's boldly written right there. Another one says Senate approves 3.6 trillion naira petrol subsidy. 8.4 trillion naira borrowing plan for 2023. That's a lot. And uh, two years after federal government yet to implement teachers' new salary package, uh, yesterday was World Teachers' Day. That's the much we can take this morning on the Daily Trust. All right, let's move over to the next paper. And uh, this time we go to the Punch News. Super. Quite some interesting headlines. Uh, INA governorship list litigation kicks 14 APC. PDP LP candidates out. Um, interesting one. The writers to that parties face court cases in Ebonya Kwaibum, Inugu, six others, Commission OK, Sanwolu, uh, Biodun Makinde, 834 others. Senate confirms 19 wrecks at Tiko Koa in Bauchi receive defectors. Um, we look at a few more from that paper. Senate approves 2023 expenditure, OK, $73 per barrel oil price. Um, Adamu governors meet to adjust Tinubu's campaign list. Uh, Teachers Day, NUT seeks better deal, Knox governors. Some headlines on the front page of The Punch. Now, uh, let's turn attention to the leadership newspaper. Quickly, Kaduna train attack after six months in captivity. Remaining 23 victims regained freedom, dominating the papers this morning. And federal government says it was a convert operation. No ransom was paid, but we also hear uh, that there was some negotiation and deals and who actually sealed and struck the deal. President Mohammed Buhari Hill's military were yet to see our loved ones and families. Uh, that's what uh, firm is quoted to say. Abuja Kaduna train service to resume soon. NRC is on that particular one. And just before we move away, APC governors blame campaign council for uh, uprising duties of party leadership. Senate rejects 1.7 trillion naira subsidy proposal. That's the much we can take this morning on the leadership newspaper. All right, then we'll take the final paper this morning and before we bring our guest in, and uh, we're talking about the nation newspaper, APC, National Working Committee, Governors, PCC, Members Unite for Tinubu. Uh, Lagos to River and Communities quit over flooding, quit over flooding. Uh, 23 meaning Abuja Kaduna train abductees freed. That's some good news right there. And Buhari promises to restore teachers' pride. Uh, some headlines on the front page of the nation. And uh, I just want to bring in a guest, Ezekiel Yatuk, uh, who joins us live from Uyo, I believe, Akwaibum State. Uh, it's been some time, uh, Ezekiel Yatuk. Nice to have you uh, join us uh, today. Let's quickly look at the situation in the All Progressives Congress. Um, I mean, a lot of people are still speculating uh, as regards the whereabouts of um, Bola Mitinubu, the presidential candidate of that party. Um, I'm sure you also remember that uh, Abdullah Adamu, the national chairman of the party, had written uh, a letter which got leaked to the press, expressing in very, very interesting words, I mean, uh, his displeasure at the, the, um, the formulation of the presidential campaign council. That letter has since been denied by the party and its leadership and the campaign team. They're saying that nothing like that was written. But we both know that that letter was written. <laughs> so um, what we hear from the nation, from the punch, rather, is that uh, Adamu and the governors are meeting to adjust Tinubu's campaign list. But uh, we don't hear anything about the man Tinubu himself. And then over to the nation, we hear that the APC National Working Committee and the governors as well as the PCC members are uniting for Tinubu. But the question a lot of people are asking is, where is Tinubu? So please speak to what the party is doing right now with this PCC and also the questions about the whereabouts of the candidate. All right, we seem to have lost our guest uh, connection issue right there. 
Okay. Um, Ezekiel and Yetu, can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you now. All right. So uh, if you got a question, please go on. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, the very first thing is that, you know, there was a video of, um, of the presidential candidate of APC doing his bike. And who knows, his um, exercise bike. If he knows that, who knows. He maybe he hasn't yet finished um, his routine. So he's got to take his full um, routine so that when he comes back, he'll be as fit as a fiddle. Um, on the other hand, there's been, there's quite a lot of, um, you know, fallouts, you know, from the decisions they had taken. And um, a lot of pretty influential people who happens to um, pay a lot of premium on their faith are getting very uncomfortable with that Muslim Muslim ticket. So there's a lot of conversations going on. People have written in to opt out. It's like, okay, may I be excused at this point? Because churches are starting to call their people and say, do you have respect for our faith? If you do, then I don't see you um, playing this role that you are being given to play. And then um, for too long, we've been taking for a ride. Uh, in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, no mention is made of Christianity or our Lord Jesus Christ or things like that. Are we really, really citizens of this country? What's going on? And are you telling me that as it were or as it is, that your winning election is more important than your being free and fair and considerate to all divides, particularly the faith, which is like um, the greatest um, divide, dividing line, uh, which is like a 50-50 thing between the Muslims and the Christians. Are we really running uh, what state? Is it a, a, a secular state or is our religion really important? If it's not, then scrap all the pilgrims, these pilgrims that and all that. Scrap it. Let's know that, I mean, uh, we, we have nothing to do with religion. But where the Constitution seems to, either by practice or by convention, recognize that there are two dominant religions and almost a 50-50, you know, balance, then why are we being treated as if uh, we, we, we are inconsequential? Just win the election. The ele why are you winning the election? Isn't it for the generality of the people? Okay, if we are not, you know, relevant to win the election, then let us move to those that um, think that we are relevant to run the government. So there's quite a lot of very deep-rooted conversations going on. I think that, you know, the political calculations that Ashwaju made by bringing a Muslim Muslim ticket, politically, it was a very sound, really, you know, um, decision to take. But in governance, you don't always take the most, um, you know, logical decision. That is the reason why we have a refinery where the petroleum product is in the south, but the refinery is in the north because of political expediency. That's why the Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. At this point, he was at liberty to choose a Muslim. Muslim was his prerogative, but I don't think it was quite expedient. And there's beginning to have a major fundamental fallout. And I think that part of the obedient movement is... Um, it is a response to, to the fact that the PDP faithfuls within the southern flank of this country are not particularly um, happy by, by, by the way they are being treated. It's like, give me your vote, but your votes are inconsequential. If our votes are inconsequential, it means that when you get into government, I'm not sure that I will be consequential. So that um, on that um, APC matter. And I don't see it resolving too soon because... There are major people who are starting to say it's not okay. And, you know, the, the interesting thing is that there are a lot of fair-minded Muslims who are saying it's not okay. They are Muslims, but they are saying it's not okay. Let's run a country where everybody is treated as, as being, being, being important. Every faith, since it's been recognized in the Constitution, then let them all be recognized as well. You know, so I think that the APC problem is more deep rooted, and it's good. Let's have these conversations uh, before we 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 suffer in silence. All right, Ezekiel. Um, let's take a look at you know the release of the twenty three victims or those who have actually regained freedom. Uh, you have uh, one hand saying the federal government actually did pay no ransom. No ransom was paid. On the other hand, there's also conversation about the negotiators and how the deal was actually sealed. 
so um, wh whose report do we believe? Do you think that, you know, ransom was actually paid? It's a good thing that they have regained their freedom, but we're saying how were these people released? Let me start by saying thank God in the loudest possible way. What a relief to the families of these people. What a relief to these people. What a day it is for them. Let's thank God and just be grateful. Let it be a, a kind of um, um, something that, that reminds us that one day I will be able to see my sister and my daughter, Leah Sharibu. You know, I did, I did a story on Leah Sharibu that, that got hundreds of thousands of, of, of comments. It was something else, you know. Uh, it was just um, a dream, so to speak. But most people thought it was, um, was real, but it was actually fictional. I, I wrote that, you know. Uh, let's, let's, let's believe that one way or the other, one day I'll be able to see her for real. And of course, all the others that are still in, uh, in captivity, the Dapchi and the rest of them. That's on one hand. Number two, please tell me the day that government told you that they paid ransom. The first is like a broken record. No ransom was paid. And let me tell you, they may be right. You know, it's like half truth. It may be really true that not a Naira was paid, but they did not say no negotiations were made. So they have not lied to you. They've just given you one side of the coin, you know? And, um, and it, sometimes... You may have to choose between which is the lesser evil, paying them some money, and then they use it to buy more ammunition and get more emboldened, or releasing some people that are just lethal. They are just um, they are just evil minds. They are the devil's you no know, you no know, workshop. They are they are people whose thoughts, life, everything is devilish, is evil, you know. And when you release such people. You, you no amount of money equates the damage that they will go back to do. And of course, also the, 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 the effect it has, the positive effect it has on their people in terms of their being emboldened. So it's true, it may be true that no ransom was paid, but let them take it a notch higher and tell us that no negotiations were made. It's interesting the way the, uh, the punch put it. Bandits release. Uh, hostages. They didn't say the government frees them. <laughs> uh, uh, the big one on the front page, of course, last night, or yesterday, rather, the, uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission released a list of uh, governorship candidates across uh, 36 states or across the states where elections are holding, not the 36 states of federation. And um, the punch is reporting that uh, after that list was released, the governorship list, uh, litigations have begun. Uh, have actually kicked 14 uh, APC, uh, PDP, and Labour Party candidates out. That is a that is a serious one, uh, which means that uh, in some of the states you don't have uh, an APC governor, you don't have a PDP governor, you have a Labour Party governor. So what, what do you, what's your take on this? Um, they are heading to court. Uh, uh, some of them are still in court already in a Boeing state. Uh, we can look at Akwaibom state, your own state as well. Uh, Enugu State and six others. So, what are your, th your thoughts on this whole uh, this whole situation regarding the governorship elections? In Akwaibo State, probably APC thought there was no need to waste their resources when Yaitok is there, so they just um, stay cool. <laughs> that's on the, that's on the lighter side. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, but you see, uh, let me speak as. Um, uh, um, a commentator and um, one who is informed, having been part of several electoral processes, even managing a party uh, as, as, the, as the national chairman. Um, even in my party, the African Democratic Congress, there were valid substitutions that we made. I mean, there are two aspects you must realize. The first has to do with factional concerns, like in, in Akwaibom State. There were factions, there were parallel congresses, there were, you know, there were a lot of discrepancies, and the law is the law. I don't want to talk more than that. 
So some, some come out of, you know, frictions and problems and non-compliance with, um, you know, the extant laws and some people thinking they can take the law into their hands and things like that. Those are certain cases where there are litigations. There are people who are contending and saying, no, you cannot be. I am. We didn't follow the process. I did. You were from INEC, uh, you know, um, 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 supervised. We were from National Working Committee that have the, the, the prerogative. They missed that link between the old Electoral Act and the new Electoral Act. In the old Electoral Act, everything just rested on the National Working Committee setting up, you know, the primaries and um, committees who come to conduct, and that was all. And INEC was just, a, you know, a passive, um, you know, observer. But in the new Electoral Act, INEC is specifically mandated, obligated to monitor and report and have control by way of supervisory role over the primaries. So... If you fail to acknowledge that, you do that to your peril. Wherever court you want to go to, you're wasting your time. Because at the end of the day, like in that of Aquaibom said, I'm sorry to say, INEC is very vehement. And not just INEC, a man like Mr. Igini. Igini is respected. He's not seen as one who is flippant or one who is, he's seen as a straightforward person. And he said, this is my stand. And some days back, he was on one of the national networks saying, though he's no longer in the commission, but he's still a citizen that has a moral right and a constitutional obligation to defend the cause of justice in the land, occupying the office of the citizen, which is the highest office in the land. And he's put his foot down that in a Quibom state, there's no candidate. So whichever way they were, they just let the, the lawyers you know, have some fun and they make their money. So that's it. And um, like I said... I wouldn't want to talk much, much more than that on that matter. All right. Now, that, there's a second part. The second part, like it affects my party, that second part is the part where you, you, you don't have any contention, but there was just a mix-up in that the, the, the candidates that had withdrawn were not properly substituted. So such candidates are now going to court and said, I had voluntarily withdrawn and this person had been sent in, and they, his name was not uploaded. I don't know why. I've already said I am not um, contesting. So please, can you remove my name and let the person that the party had sent forward take the seat? That's what's happened to some seats in my own state, a quiet boom state in the House of Assembly. So that one is a straightforward matter. It is the person who withdrew that is saying, I'm not doing it. And there wasn't any other contending force. So it is like um, a consensus. So within that, the court will simply say, this man says he doesn't want to contest. He said he had even written a withdrawal. And he says this person was supposed to be. So Aine, can you please honor his request? All so right. those are two different approaches. Ezekiel, uh, we're about to you know, wrap it up right here. And uh, straight up from the Daily Trust newspaper, I'd like to share your thoughts about you know, the non-implementation of the newly proposed teacher's salary uh, two years after, I mean, it was put out there, 2020. And yesterday was, uh, you know, World Teacher's Day as it was celebrated. It's sad. It's unfortunate. It's unacceptable. It's a misplacement of priorities. We really don't see teachers as the people that we should all be looking up to for the good future of our country. And it is, it is, I pray that everybody seeking to occupy particularly two offices, one, the office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the office of the governor of any state, let these people make definitive statements binding on the welfare of teachers. Teachers, education is the future of any country. And you cannot talk of education without the teachers and the lecturers. Every single person that wants to be a president or wants to be a governor must make a definitive statement on education and without the foundation being the teachers, without, before you talk of the infrastructure. 
these two things must be addressed. And I want the Nigerian Union of Teachers and, of course, Nigerian Labor Congress not to just move into this massive endorsement. Bring every single candidate to the table and say, what is your take and what is your antecedents? Is there something you have done in the past that can give us the confidence that you appreciate education? You know, someone like myself, several years back, I told Nigeria over 12, 15 years back that the greatest gift that this nation gave to me was sending me to Federal Government College, Warri, where I had the best education that anybody could have in the whole world. And I am who I am today from a village boy to somebody that is celebrated at the national and global levels because of one thing, the education that my country gave me. So for me, it's, it's something that pains me. It aches my heart that you allow teachers to be treated as not as important as bankers or oil industry workers. I pray God makes me the next governor of Akwaibon State and people will come to leave their state to want All to right, be Ezekiel, teachers in Akwaibon. Ezekiel, maybe you need to come. You know, uh, we'll talk more about all of that. I don't know what my miss is laughing at. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's kind of, yeah, Ezekiel, thank you for your time. I mean, it's, yes, it's really uh, we great. Will, thank will, you so much. We would like to have you sometime soon. Um, and of course, uh, wish you all the best in your uh, political endeavors. Thank you. You guys are an awesome pair. You thank are, you so much. Just... Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate it. All right, uh, we'll take a break. And when we come back, we have a first major conversation right here on The Breakfast, uh, looking at Nigeria's economy and the effect of inflation uh, as the World Bank has released uh, a recent report. Stay with us.